Alright, what's going on? Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, it is me, the Glacier, and I got a brand new video for you guys today. We're going to be changing it up and going back to kind of the old school Glacier, where I'm going to do a complete, complete walkthrough of one of my games that I played on my Gold 3 Smurf on how to solo carry from top lane with Garen. Um, you do not have to play Garen for this. You can play any top lane champion that can run Ignite and that can steamroll and build a huge snowball and is able to split push effectively as well. So there's countless other champions you can play. It's up to you to decide who. I'll be leaving a link for the runes and the masteries in the description below. And eventually, after I hit Diamond 5 on Garen, there will be a full in-depth Garen guide, every single thing you need to know. So this is going to be a walkthrough of just the gameplay and the things that need to happen once you're in the game. Okay, so the first thing that needs to happen is when you level 1, you need to decide your starting items. 99% um, of the time in your guys' elo, all the way from bronze to platinum, you're going to want to have to start... I'm sorry, you're going to want to start longsword 3 about 99% of the time. There's very few matchups in low elo that you're going to want to start. Um, cloth or Doran Shield. Uh, I, I would recommend starting the longsword 3. Okay, now... Before we get into the lane phase, I gotta say, I gotta preface this matchup. Um, we're going against Master Yi. It's a little weird um, the way the matchup works. But the thing you need to understand about Garen is the way you play him in lane is you're going to camp the living hell out of these brushes. And you're going to run in and out of the brush. You're going to proc Green Father's Gift by being into the brush right here. Okay, this extra 3% damage. And you're going to Q, run at your opponent, hit them, run back. Go back to last inning, and then you keep doing the exact same thing over and over again. This is how I abuse top laners. You, you, they cannot do most. Ninety-nine percent of top laners cannot retaliate because you are silencing them for one and a half seconds, and you're running away as well. Okay. Now, if they get close enough to you, obviously you want to go for the auto attack cue, which will do obviously double the damage. So that is all you are going to do during this lane phase, okay? All right, so we're gonna start off in lane phase. As you can see, the biggest mistake everyone makes, just like this Master Yi, is they think that they need to push this. For some reason, I don't understand why everyone thinks they need to push right off the bat, but you don't. That is the biggest illusion. You do not want to push ever. If you push, guess what? You, how are you gonna kill him if he's under the tower? Or, the jungler can easily come and gank you if you're overextended. Never, ever, ever push the lane. You want it to be pushing into you, and you want it to freeze, okay? So he cues the wave, and I make a huge mistake right here. This is a very bad mistake, very big mistake, very common in your guys' elo. It's fighting in the enemy minion wave. We are overextended right now, believe it or not. We have already taken an unfavorable trade, and we are out of position. Remember, creeps... During the early lane phase, during the early parts of the game, act as another champion. So the fact that this one's hitting me and all three of these caster minions, it's like another champion is sitting here auto-attacking me. So there's basically two Master Yi's attacking me right now, theoretically, okay? So as you can see, I end up kind of kind of losing the trade here. Yeah, so I end up losing the trade right there. We get him, you know, a little low. He takes a little minion aggro. Oh, what the fuck? So anyway, I end up taking an unfavorable trade. Um, a lot of people in low elo are very, very aggressive. You see, like, look, check this out. Look at this kid decided to cue onto me in my creep wave. Now, it, it, as you hear, as you watch, it, it looks like it. He almost gets away with it, but I'm Garen and I know what I can do. All right, let me slow it down for you guys so you can see. This just comes down to knowing your champion. Um, so we took a bad trade because we fought in his creeps. Don't ever do that. He decides to be stupid and cue onto me in my creep wave, so I kite him back so he takes minion aggro. Remember, minions do a lot of damage. Okay? So let's sit here and wait for it real quick. Cues onto me. Immediately, I start running back. I immediately go for the auto cue slap, and I immediately start orb walking because I know I'm going to be able to kill him. Remember, he has no ignite. All he He's level 1. He has no way of, of beating me. He just uses Q, so I know for a fact that I win this if I can outplay him. So I go for the orb walk. Auto. Proc Storm Raider Surge. He flashes for some reason. I drop the ignite, and I know that the ignite's going to do enough damage to take out this much damage, and I just run away. 
there it is. There's the first blood. Now, obviously, that's just some weird, weird stuff that most likely is never going to happen. Um, but yeah. Okay, now what should have happened right here is I should have recalled. Because, one, he has teleport, which means he could easily just teleport here or he could teleport here. I have no health. And two, you, you're level one. You, you should not be pushing the wave ever in this situation unless you have the wave clear. Um, he has more minions, or roughly around the same, so it's going to either push into me or kind of freeze right here. Um, so I, basically, I would have been able to make it back in time for this creep wave perfectly. Um, but instead, I make the mistake of sitting here, which I actually think was not a bad idea because I think I still have a health potion. Let me see. Okay, yeah, I still have a health potion. So it's actually not the worst idea. We can we can fully sustain up, so we're, we're okay for now. So he comes back to lane. He's fresh, full HP. I'm just looking to stay safe, try and use my passive to get to full HP. Remember not to overextend past your creep wave to trade with people. It's not worth it. You take too much minion aggro, and you'll take unfavorable trades, and you'll end up losing the matchup. So again, look. We're not worried about doing anything. We're 1-0 against him. Look it. Let him push. Let him push. You know, let your jungler know Master Yi has no flash. He's available for a gank. Just focused on last hitting right now. Nothing else matters. We don't need to kill him. We have a lead. Let's just focus on these last hits under tower. Okay? All right, we're missing a couple here, unfortunately. But that's fine. That's fine. All right, look. Check this out. I communicated in the chat. I know you can't see it. I have no way of getting rid of this, but I communicated in the chat that the Master Yi had no flash for five minutes, okay? So I, I timed it in the chat. You should always be doing that. Let your jungler know what's going on. Guess what? Look who's coming up to save the day. Look who's coming. And look. Now, this is an important thing, too. You have to learn how to time your ganks. Not as the jungler, but I mean, you have to learn when to go in and when to bait them, okay? So let's let's just watch this again. We're gonna watch this in slow mo. Remember, this is a very in-depth video. You can skip along if you kind of want to see the mid game and stuff. But I'm kind of trying to go over every possible situation so you guys understand what I'm thinking. All right, look, I see that Shivana's up here. She's closing the gap, so I'm immediately gonna go all in on this guy. There's nothing he can do. We are he already wasted his flash earlier. He has nothing, so I'm just gonna go for the all in. There's nothing he can do. Boom. Now, what I should have done is I should have been kiting down. I was a little too tunneled on the Master Yi and kiting up to try and kill him. Um, so I wasn't paying attention, so I ended up dying. And then Shivana ends up dying here because she, she's not confident in herself, so she hesitates a little too much. Yeah, and then she gets creep. Yeah. That's okay, though. That's okay. Okay, so after that little fiesta, I end up going back and I end up going for some lethality i'm going immediately for the i'm immediately going for a yomu's ghost blade because we're two and oh or we were we're two and one and we can no no problem take out this mastery mastery is not a hard matchup for garen ever um, and i'm also going for a pair of ninja tabbies as well to stop a lot of that auto attack damage from him jinx and trundle remember you want to itemize the first two items that you buy possibly even three is going to be against your top laner and it's going to be against the enemy jungler because those are the two people you're going to have to worry about when you're split pushing when you're trying to take the tier one the tier two when you're going bot lane you're trying to take the bot tower you're trying to do all these different things you're going to be dealing with the jungler and you're going to be dealing with the top laner to cover you okay so he ends up going afk or something here i don't know what's going on i'll take my free kill whatever He's got no teleport. Remember, timing the cooldowns is very, very important. You should know that teleport is five minutes, flash is five minutes. Or at least I think teleport's five minutes. I don't know. Okay, check this out. Check this out. All right, here's a big one. A lot of you guys don't understand when to roam. Yes, I could technically be hitting this tower and getting it low, but it's only five minutes in. And if you guys have ever watched my stream or guides or anything before, you do not want to take the tower before 10 minutes. What happens What happens when you take the tower before 10 minutes, Glacier? Well, I'll tell you. I'll tell you, Ice Cubes. Guess what? All these creeps, all these minions get to run, 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 run all the way to here. Okay? Now, if he's a, if he's a smart player... He can freeze the wave and leave it here forever and force me to overextend all this way 
leaving me exposed to mid lane ganks or even jungler ganks, okay? Just making it w very dangerous for me for no reason. And it makes him it makes it completely safe for him. So we don't want to give him that comfortability. We don't want him to do that. So that's why you wait until you're strong enough after 10 minutes to take the tower. That's why I let all the minions die. I let every single I push the wave to the tower like you saw. Every single one of these minions is going to die and then this wave is going to crash right dead center in the lane when I get back. Okay. So after that, you should always, and anytime you're ever in this situation, you need to be looking for that roam. Whether it's in the jungle to kill Trundle, or it's mid lane to, you know, to kill um, Octopus. Whatever, what is this champion's name? Zillion. Okay. So we're going to run mid. Okay. Alright, so I end up running mid. Going for a nice kill. I think I get unlucky right there. Yeah, he, he lives with, like, legit 2 HP. And then I end up just kiting this one out. I know I can't win it, so I just go back. And I go for a nice little play. Boom. Here, let me re... I'll replay. I'll slow that down for you guys so you can see what's going on. Okay. Alright, hold on. Okay. So, anyway... Um, my buddy died, and I know for a fact that Trundle can easily just 1v1 me, no problem. You have to understand that if you don't have Fervor of Battle and Garen, you cannot just sit there and duke it out with someone without your spell. So I'm kiting it out. I'm waiting for my cooldowns to come back up. My Q was not up over here. My E just came up. So we're just kiting it out right now. Okay, now look, check this out. I have Ignite. He doesn't. I have a Silence. He doesn't. So I take this opportunity to take the fact that I could easily die. This guy has nothing to offer. He's not level 6. He has no flash. He has nothing. He has no ignite. This is game knowledge. This is me paying attention to the enemy's cooldowns. He has nothing to offer, okay? So all I have to do here is either auto Q ignite, he dies, or I just Q ignite and run away. Q, ignite, auto. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that. And we're safe. And we get out. Unscathed, I pick up a nice juicy blue buff. Okay. Now, I decide to stay. Normally, I would back every single time in a safe spot like this brush or this tower. Uh, but I see a gigantic juicy wave here. But Master Yi is pushing, so I'm a little hesitant. Let's see. You see, yeah, I'm recalling. I'm hesitant. But I see he does not decide to siege mid tower. So, of course, I'm going to go for the free XP and farm. Then we're going to recall after this. You don't want to overstay. You always want to keep recalling at these perfect times because we want to come back for this wave. This is what you want to pay attention to. I guess the rule of thumb for you guys to remember with top lane and like knowing when to back, knowing when to roam, all that stuff. The perfect time to back is you want this wave to essentially be crashing into your tower when you're at the tower. That is the perfect time to recall. Or, I mean, that's the perfect situation, the ideal situation. That's what you want to aim for every single time. All right, looks like Master Yi is going to get a little crazy here. Um, I don't know if I had flash or anything. Let me see. No. But anyway, it's not important to chase that kill. That's another thing I want you guys to take away from this is you'll notice this game that kills are not my objective. I'm going to show you as you guys keep watching that all I give a shit about are taking objectives. I do not care about kills. If the kill is there, if it's right in front of my face, yes, I'm going to go for it. I'm going to take it. But I'm not going to force it and chase people for stupid kills. That mean nothing. Okay, so I'm not pushing because I know he's just going to come back in time for the wave to crash into his tower. So I would like to slowly push and get a nice creep wave going here. Um, I have a huge advantage in the top lane. I got a level advantage. I got a blue bluff. Actually, I got a two-level advantage. Look at that. I'm so strong right now. Item-wise, he has a Vamp Scepter Cloth Armor, and I have almost an entire Yoma's Ghost Blade. So this is a very easy dive. Uh, we don't know where the jungler is, so we go for a ward. Nice. Control ward, as always. Now, we need to make sure that this wave resets. So I'm going to try and push this wave into the tower with my E. Very nice. Not exposing myself to very much danger here. Okay, so it looks like I decide to go for a roam instead, which is fine. All right, let's see. Yep. Looks like I end up going for a roam here. And I think I actually end up killing this guy. 
Oh, a little bit of a misplay right here. Okay. So this was my fault. This was my fault. Let's go over this one more time. Okay, so this right here was a great room. We pushed him under the tower. Okay, we had... Uh, this is a very easy kill. Unfortunately, what ends up happening here is Zillion ends up making a very clutch play in saving the Trundle. I agree with this, this decision-making 100%, and I support it. You should be making plays like this. But what I should have recognized, instead of tunneling on this guy, I should have immediately turned onto this guy and killed him. Because look, look who's next to me. I got my buddy. Look how, I know Master E's coming over here, but it does not matter. Look how look how low these guys are. I'm Garen. Ignite's coming up soon. I got Flash. I got a Pantheon, and I got Ult. Should have immediately, immediately turned onto this guy. But I fucked up. But that's okay. I end up dying. Oh, well. Let's reset. Let's go back to top lane. Okay, I'm back in the top lane. Stopped Master Yi from taking my stuff. And he ends up recalling. Now, this part of the game is, is, is kind of boring. I recommend once you have your lead, either you can decide to freeze top lane forever... Or you can decide to push the wave into the tower in Rome, which is exactly what I'm doing. That's what I decide to do, just because I know I can get easy kills onto Trundle and onto Octopus. Alright, he's overextending. I'm going to go for a nice little play here. I thought he was going to meditate right away for some reason. But again, I'm just doing the same thing. I'm just trying to make sure that it's safe before I ever make any kind of tower dive decision. Tower diving is a huge thing you need to understand on Garen, but before you ever end up making a tower dive, you need to make sure that the jungler is bot lane, and I think I end up seeing that here. Oh yeah, he's done. Go for the auto Q because it's there. He flashes. Not going to chase. No point. No point. We got what we wanted. Now we set ourselves up for that free tower dive. If, if he decides to stay, he's dead. Okay. So this guy's here. All right. Again, I'm just looking for a tower dive right now, so I'm going to push this. There's nothing he can do. He flashed away. There's absolutely... Oh, look. Look at this cutie. He's a Mastery 7. He's BMing me. That's, that's cute. Boom. Done. Pop everything. That's fine. Kite it out. Boom. Done. Simple. He wasted flash. Jungler's bot lane, and mid lane is mid. So what is he going to do? That's my question to you guys. These are the things you have to recognize, okay? You have to abuse the fact that these guys in this elo, they're always going to do this. They're going to be very greedy. They're going to BM you. They're going to sit here and think that you don't have the balls to go and dive them. But you're Garen. You have a one and a half second silence. You rock the ignite, and you slap them in the face with your ult, and it's over. All right, then what we're going to do is I think we're taking the tower right now. Let me see here. Oh, I'm kind of looking. I'm looking to take the... Yeah, we're going to take the creeps, and then we're going to take the tower, because remember, it's after 10 minutes, so it's acceptable now. And he has no teleport. I almost made the mistake of recalling there, but that would have been very bad. You want to end the game as quickly as possible by 20. Okay. So we're taking the tower. Remember, before you go back, always push your wave. Always, always, always push your wave, okay? Now, instead of being greedy, we decide to recall. Look, look what happens to the wave. It pushes into him. There we go. And now what's going to happen is his creep wave is going to crash into mine. And so forth. He's going to keep pushing. It's going to go right into me. Perfect. Okay, now let's talk about the itemization. Now, this is a type of game where I would recommend... Hold on, let me turn off the sound. This is the type of game that you're going to want to split push in, okay? Team is not doing so hot. Yes, Siobhan is doing well, but look at three out of five members are getting shit on. 0-2, 3 one You know, team fighting is just... It, in my opinion, solo queue is... It doesn't make any sense for you to team fight when you're this far ahead. I I own top lane. This kid's 0-4. I'm 5-2. I got Ninja Tabby, Yomu's, I got some got some good vision control. You know, I got everything going for me in the top lane. There's not a goddamn thing these guys can do. Alright. 
Could have easily killed him, but I ended up just uh, backing out. <clears throat> Got his ult. That's fine. I'll take it. Again, um, just uh, pretty much this game, I'm, I'm trying to just not be greedy. I, that way, I told myself when I played this game, let's try and put ourselves in the mind of someone who's a little less experienced with Garen and, you know, not take as much risk. Let's not go super ham with the kills this game. All right, he queues the wave. He's got no Q. I'm waiting for him to auto-attack me. I'm trying to bait out any spells that I can possibly get out of him before I dive him. And look, we get a nice, easy kill. Okay. Always, 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 always drop this ward. Always. I cannot tell you how often I see you guys. I, I'll spe I, I will watch some of your guys' games sometimes, or I'll look you guys up, or whatever, and... Or in, in my coaching sessions, or whatever the hell it may be, you guys are doing this. You're do everything's going great. You just dove the master Yi, and you're pushing. But guess what? Look who's here. But you forgot to drop the control ward, so you end up getting ganked, and then you lose your lead. You lose your pressure. You have to drop this ward in this exact spot every single time. Okay, on this on the blue side of the map. Okay, vice versa. You're gonna drop it right here. Or right here, either one. I personally like to drop it right here. I think it gives me a little bit more vision, and I can put a yellow trinket in here, uh, or right here, you know, whatever. You know, same thing. You gotta have that vision control when you're split pushing, otherwise, you're gonna get caught out. All right, now that we're at the tier two, we want to push this out as quickly as possible. And I end up recalling here just because I don't know where Trundle is, I don't wanna risk it. Again, keep going back, keep maintaining the pressure maintain the experience advantage and most importantly maintain this item advantage this guy is 0 and 5 he's going for a blade of the rune king and i'm almost i'm almost halfway no i am i'm halfway done with my trinity force so i go back i get a refillable potion and guess what i get another control word always always have a control word in your inventory always because what happens if he ends up clearing this just spend the extra 75 gold spend the extra 150 gold whatever Buy one or two control words, it's not a big deal, okay? And I got these just in case. All right, he's overextended again. I don't know why I didn't go for a kill right there. Yeah, okay. So there, there's there's definitely a couple opportunities in here where I should have been aggressive and gotten kills. But again, like I said, I'm, I'm playing a little less a little less ham than I normally do because I'm, I'm just trying to prove a point where it's not all about the kills, it's all about the objective control. And you're going to see me really, really ramp it up after I take this tier 2 top. So let's speed it up here. Again, I don't know why I'm chilling here. I guess I'm just trying to not get ganked here, but I think I end up getting ganked, maybe. Alright, he, he overextends. Night-night. We're going to go for this tier 2 as quickly as we possibly can. It's very important that you don't waste any time with the tier 2s. The tier 2s are very, very difficult to get. You have to put yourself in a bad spot. Like this. You see what I'm saying? Look, I overextend. I overextend. And I end up dying. I end up getting trapped by the trundle wall and all that stuff. So that was my mistake right there. Me getting caught out right there. It's my third death of the game. Okay, so I kind of want to show you guys something. So I end up going to the bottom lane instead of top lane. Um, I noticed that the enemy team is really, really adamant about protecting this tower. Also, my team is really, really adamant about kind of grouping with me up there, which I don't want. I want to be independent. I'm telling my team right now, guys, group up together, you know, distract them, buy me some time. I can one-shot all of these towers and I can take everything for free. So that's kind of what I've been telling my team. All right, we're just pushing, creating that pressure. Now someone is going to have to come down here and stop me. Now I do make a couple of mistakes. I end up like right here. Here's a perfect example of me being a little too aggressive. Um, we don't know where anyone on the map is, so we should assume every time if we don't know where anyone is, chances are they all could be in that brush. So me being greedy like this makes no sense. You'll see in a second. Hold on. Well, I guess it's not right there. 
just trying to maintain this pressure. Okay. Now, most of you guys would have gone for a team fight right there, but what you want to do is you want to prioritize the towers every single fucking time, every single time over anything else. Okay, and I think I ended up recalling here. I do end up recalling here. Okay, look. Only reason I end up recalling here is because of the Rift Herald in the top lane. I decide I need to go and stop that. There's too much pressure in the mid lane. They have the dominant pressure, so I have to react to this. I have to. We do end up losing the tier 2, but at least I'm able to clear this gigantic wave and get pressure rolling again in the top lane. Alright. So I end up pushing this out. Still got pressure in the bot lane. Still got good pressure. Someone's going to have to go deal with this eventually. So it's my job now to go do the same thing to top lane. And this is pretty much the game that, you, that you're that you going to play as a top laner. Whether it's Garen, whether it's Riven, Yasuo, anyone. This is what you do as a top laner. Or a split pusher, period. It's, it's the game of pressure. You put so much pressure on one side of the map that the enemy team is forced to deal with it. Otherwise, they they're just going to lose the game. They're going to lose towers. They're going to lose inhibitors. And they don't want that. So you use that, you use that against them. With that knowledge, if people are going to come top to stop me, well, guess what? Now I'm going to go bot lane and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to force you to come down here. And then you tell your team, guys, make plays off of that. Okay, and I think I end up killing this guy. He goes a little too ham, maybe. Let's see. Yep, I ended up kiting him out, getting a nice escape. Very cool. Um, I don't know. What, I don't know what's going on here. I usually don't like these random skirmishes. I kind of just like to stick to the objectives. Okay, and that's exactly what I end up doing here. So we decided to push mid. And all that happened up there is I knew Zillion had ult, so I just wanted to kite out that Master Yi with my spin and just run away for as long as I can. This guy just ends up getting real crazy. I think he flashes away here. Which is so unbelievable that he gets away. Boom, boom. Nice auto Q. Clear the wave. We see everyone is top lane. And I also know Master Yi's coming, so I'm just trying to clear this wave before I die. There we go. Just get the hell out. I tell him to just keep running. I'm See, what I'm doing here is I'm coming back in, not to not to fight, but to intimidate. I want them to back off, so I keep I stay next to my partner. I know that there's nothing they can do, okay? Master Yi has nothing. Trundle has no flash, so I'm safe. It's not like there's Syndra and they can stun me, or Ari that can jump and charm me. It's none of that stuff. So look, I'm staying in range. If he needs help, I come back in for a Q slap, for a silence, maybe. I'm trying to stay. I'm just trying to be here for like intimidation purposes, but I'm not putting myself in danger. So he has to, unfortunately... Um, he has to die. There's nothing I could have done there. But in most scenarios like that, they'll end up backing off because they will be scared by you. They will be scared. Or they'll be scared of you, rather. Okay. Now check this out. Um, let's see what goes on here. Okay, so I think we have, yeah, look, we have vision of them doing Baron. I tell Ziggs, Ziggs, get in there. I'll be there in a second. Now, one thing you got to understand about team communication is don't flame. Don't say, Ziggs, what the fuck? What the fuck? Don't don't be an asshole. No one responds to that. Be like, hey, you got You have to be a team player. You have to tell your teammates, hey, I'm on my way, Ziggs. Can you get in there and start messing around with them? I'll be right there. Like, you know, be supportive. They, people respond to that. People respond to positivity and teamwork. They don't respond to criticism and negative, negative bullshit. Okay? So we're on our way. Immediately on my way. We have to stop them from baroning. This was the worst baron call of all time. I immediately skip him. Now check this out. Decision making. Decision making. Decision making. All right. Let's let's yeah. Let's slow this down once I get there. Hold up. All right. Okay. Look. I want to show you something that's very important. Let's let's see this real quick. Freeze frame. Okay. Now check this out. A lot of uh, sadly, a lot of you guys would hit this guy right here because he's the closest target i swear right now 99 percent of you guys watching would hit this guy or maybe not i don't know maybe like 80 percent of you guys would hit this guy a lot of you bronze silver and gold guys would hit this guy but this is the world's biggest mistake he's a tank for number one and number two um 
There's a Fiesta waiting for me right here. There's a free triple. So what I'm going to try and do is make my way around and flash and get some kills here. I do end up making a, a little mistake because I didn't account for the slow. Yeah, so I kind of got screwed. But it still ended up working out. She turned into me for some reason. Then I got Storm Raider Surge proc'd. Going for the double kill. And I ended up just kind of kiting him out. And look. Look who it is. I think he ends up being... Yeah, he's gone. Okay. I don't know what what, is, what was with the hesitation here. Yeah, a little bit of hesitation. So I think I end up going up here. And I am searching for him. But at the same time, remember... Hold up. Let me show you something. Again, 80 or 99% of you guys would have chased. You all would have chased him and you would have chased Zillion, okay? But but why? What is the point in chasing them when I can push this, get some nice pressure going, and possibly even take an inhibitor tower? You know what I'm saying? Or look, or even a Baron. You see what I'm saying? I get the nice pressure going. Okay, look. I shove the wave before I leave the lane because now... All of these creeps are going to crash into the tower. And while we're doing Baron, someone on the enemy team has to be here. They have to. If they don't, they're going to lose a substantial amount of HP on the tower. Okay? So I decide after doing that, I'm going to go group with my team. And I'm going to help them out with Baron. Because that is the smartest decision. Decision. Uh, okay. Um... I think it ends up getting kind of close, does it? Let me see. God, I hate this fucking client. Okay, no, it doesn't. Clear the ward. Okay, now every time that you do Baron, it is very important that you recall and you reset immediately. You have an empowered recall. It takes like one and a half seconds or two seconds to recall. Recall every time. Do not do this. This right here is a mistake. No. Bad, 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 bad. Recall. Okay? Get your items. So far, we have a Yomu's Ghost Blade and we have a Triforce. Okay, and I want to talk about something real quick. So, you can see I have a Lord Dominic's Regard instead of a Black Cleaver. Um, you don't want to get a Black Cleaver and a Triforce because stacking the Phage is actually like a huge waste of gold. Uh, the 1350, also the cooldown reduction is overkill too. I think we are at... I don't know how to check my cooldown reduction. Oh, look. Is that it? No, that's ability power. Hold on. One sec, one sec. Okay. So you can see... Where the fuck am I? Sorry, guys. I'm, I don't know how to, how to work this damn spectating thing. So anyway, um, I have a lot of cooldown reduction. I have 10%, I have 30%, and I have 10% scaling, so... Probably almost almost 40% CDR right now. So Black Cleaver makes no sense once you go Triforce. It's either you go Trinity Force or you go Black Cleaver, okay? Depending on the situation. Now, the situation is they have a super, super freaking tanky um, Trundle that I have to deal with a lot. And they have a Master Yi as well who's stacking a little bit of HP and he also has some armor. So what better item to get than a Lord Dominic's Regard? Armor penetration, all that stuff. It's a situational item. Um... And it also does a lot of damage. It has a lot of flat attack damage, which is going to help me out with taking towers too. So it's, it's a very good item to get. Normally, I would recommend that you guys go for a Sterex Gauge here um, or a Guardian Angel. It's, just, it's, all, it's all situational stuff. They're all great items. All right, look. So I see this team fight here. And I'm, I'm really not trying to... I'm, I'm never really trying to fully commit to a team fight because I don't want to risk... I don't want to risk one of my teammates messing up. Like, what if Thresh flashes in and completely misses all of his abilities and gets one shot? And I don't want to risk any of those stupid plays. So we're, I'm trying to save my teammates by supporting them coming into the fight. And we're just trying to survive here. So I'm going for Zillion. Trundle's tanking this because he's a freaking monster. I think I end up going for him. This is just some random skirmish. This is whatever. He ends up dying. I go for her. I don't think I end up getting her. Yeah, she ends up ulting me away or something. Oh, I do. Okay. And this guy tries fighting me. I don't know why. I don't know why I backed off. I, I backed off. I think I'm just scarred from Master Yi. Master Yi has... I've gone against a lot of Diamond 5 Master Yi's lately, and they have gotten so fed, and I've just tilted off the face of the planet. So I think I'm just scarred. <laughs> okay, there we go. All right, check this out. Yes, I am chasing him right now. But I have my eye on the prize, which is here, mid-tower, okay? 
Not going to chase him into the jungle. Look at this. We got Baron buff. We're going to push. Because remember, what wins games? Objectives, not kills, okay? And yes, I do have 11 kills. You know, it is whatever. It's The objectives is the sole reason why I'm winning this game. Easy tower. All right, I'm going to go clear out his jungle. And look, create that pressure in the top lane. You want to take his red buff anytime you can. Just quickly nuke it. I normally drag it into the brush, but I'm so damn fed right now that I don't even care. I'm, I'm pretty sure I can 1v1 anyone at this point. So, again, back to the game. Back to the game. You got all your tier 2 towers gone now. So what do you do? What do you do at this point? The same thing. The same thing you've been doing this whole time. Top lane, shove it out so it shoves all the way into the tower. Mid lane, shove it out so it shoves all the way into the tower. Bot lane, shove it out so it goes all the way into the tower. Okay? Um, also, while you're doing this, you need to look for opportunities. So check it out. Their whole team is choosing to, to kind of push mid lane. So you just have to play off of what your team and what the enemy team is doing. Like, look at this. Look, look, look. Let me show you what's going on right now. This is about to be a huge play. I type in the chat to my team, guys, I can take the top lane inhibitor if you can distract the enemy team without dying. That's all I said. All right? So let's let's take a look at what happens here. All right. Remember, I'm level 16. This guy's level 11. Killing this guy is not an issue. So him being here is is really just I don't even know why. I mean I mean obviously he has to be here, but the point is I'm telling my team to not let them recall ever. They're doing a great job. They're stalling them out. I can see all four people on the map the whole time before I end up making any decisions. And I don't want to go for a dive without creeps. You know you 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 still you know we are we are planning on tower diving him, but we don't want to be greedy. You know he he has flash. He's got alpha strike. He's got alt. You know, he's got, he's got the tools to be able to kind of kite me around if I mess things up. So we don't want to give him any opportunity to do that. Okay, and I think I pop my W because I know he's going to start hitting me. Boom. Immediately start going for the all-in. And I drop that. Boom. Get out of the tower range. Boom. Boom. All right. A little sloppy of a dive, not going to lie. But now, look, now we're on the race for time. We have Baron buff. And we need, to, we need to get this damn inhibitor down as fast as possible. Look, I tell my team to stop the recalls. Check it out. Look what's going on. Team's killing it. Four people still here. It's all good. It doesn't matter. It does not matter. Inhibitor. I'll trade the inhibitor tower for this tower any day of the week. Look at, look at me go. Look at that. Look at me go. Boom. 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 Look at that. Look at that damage. And actually, look. Check this out. I see 18 seconds, 18 seconds on this guy, okay? I see four people here, so guess what? Look what I'm going to do. Boom, boom. Slapping the hell out of this tower, okay? Very nice. Look at, look how much I took. Look at this. The, game's, the game is in my hands, guys. It's, in, it's completely, I'm in control. My t I don't need my team to do well. 2 and 8, 2 and 6, 0 oh and 5. Shivana's is doing very, very well. Uh, but then again, she kind of did just kind of pick up kills. Like She hasn't really done anything this game besides pick up kills. But the point is, look, 3 out of 5 of my people are, are almost worthless, okay? I'm using my team as almost a bunch of... I'm just... They're, they're really just a distraction, okay? Now, I end up going for this tower, and I get kind of unlucky, I think. Yeah, because I get so close to taking it. Yeah, check this out. And then, yeah, I get hit away. I think I end up... Oh, yeah, I actually end up making a pretty cool play here. Hold up. Okay. So, normally I would say... This is this is why your KDAs are not going to be that great on Garen, but your win rates are going to be pretty high. Is Because you're going to want to make plays like this. It's a race against the clock. I still see saw three people on the map. I know Master Yu's coming up. I know I'm most likely dead here, but I don't care because if I get this tower, that's an open nexus, and I have I can easily backdoor this. So I'm going for it. I'm gonna I'm ready to die. I'm committed. Okay, Jana ults me away. I have lost any chance of getting that tower. So guess what? I'm gonna try and take one out with me, and I end up just kiting him out just enough. And I think I end up flashing over the wall here. I probably didn't have to, but you know what? Might as well. Style points. I saw that he took the dragon, so instead of running down towards dragon and getting caught out, I decided to run left. 
Okay. So that was a pretty good play. That was actually a really good play. Um, I really wish I would have gotten this tower, um, but that's okay. And I, what do I, what do I end up doing here? Mm, I end up going and taking their camps. That's the last thing you end up doing, by the way, before you recall. After you have created this pressure, because look, they have to deal with it. They have to deal with all of the pressure you created. That means it's safe for you to go into their jungle and take their camps and then recall. That is the order of things, and that's how it should be done every time. Okay. All right. Top lane. No point. No point in me going top lane. You want to know why? Right there. What's this guy called? Inhibitor or what the f No, what? No, no, no. <laughs> it's a... Uh, I don't even know what it's called. It's a super minion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Super minions. Okay. We got super minions. All right. No matter what this guy does, he can push a thousand waves. This is automatically going to push. It's going to steamroll anything that it throws at it all the way up. So there's no point. There's no point in you ever going to in inhibit. Whenever you take an inhibitor, stop going to that lane. There's no point. He can push it out all he wants. The creeps are going to push through no matter what. And also, it's actually good that he's here because, you know, like I said, someone. it's the pressure game. Someone has to deal with this. Whether it's right here or it's down here, someone's here, okay? Now that leaves four people on the map. Well, guess what? I see every single one of them. So now we're going to start working on this bottom side, okay? You're playing the pressure game. That's all you're doing with Garen and any top laner. You can watch any high elo top laner um, play in low elo, play in high elo. They do the same thing. The pressure game is how you win. Okay, he ends up dropping that TP. I think I end up respecting it. Kind of looking to just get some picks here. See what I'm saying? Do you see the flow? I created the pressure. There's nothing to do, so guess what? I can either look to roam. Well, there's nowhere to roam. Well, guess what? Let's clear out the enemy jungle. There is an order. All right. He ends up... Let's see. Hold on. How do I... Okay, he ends up overextending, and I go for a free kill. I don't waste my ult. I think I'm getting collapsed on right now. So I'm kind of just trying to fight this in the best way that I can. And I think he ends up actually saving me. Maybe. Maybe, maybe, maybe. they got like a million people coming after me right now. The problem is Trundle. Trundle has like a thousand slows and he steals all your AD and he's, I hate him. I think they end up getting me here. Yeah, they do. Okay. So I was a little overextended. was not expecting for them, you know, 50,000 people to be there. But I think my team ends up cleaning this up. Which is great. It's always good when your team can pick up some kills and stuff. It's awesome. But either way, even if that fight went bad, um, I don't think that there was anything that they could do because they have, they have too much pressure up here. There's too much, way too much pressure going on. I don't think Baron was an option because no matter, even if they aced us, still they would have been too low to do Baron. So that's why it's so important for you to create this pressure. I mean, look at. Look at this. Look at their base. I'm dead. I just got caught by four people. But because of all this insane pressure that I created, look at this. Their base is just getting absolutely demolished. And they might actually lose the tower here. Let's see. Yeah, look, the team ends up going in. I think my team ends up ending it here. Oh, they don't. Okay. Oh, I end up backdooring. Okay, check this out. All right. Let's talk again. Okay. So now we're in a situation where all we got to do is take out that Nexus, okay? Inhibitor's down. Fresh inhib. Fresh inhib again. Oh, this inhib. Okay, never mind. This inhib is going to spawn in like two seconds. This is a fresh inhib, so this one's going to take a while. So that's good. So what we're going to do is we're going to look to make a play. Now, I do this every time. I buy a Guardian Angel. We got the Sterex Gauge. This is like the full build. This is a very, very strong build on Garen. I highly recommend it for split pushing. The Guardian Angel is Guardian Angel and Sterex Gauge, Yomu's Ghost Blade, Trinity Force, by far the best split pushing items. These two items are going to help you survive. When you're sitting there and you're hitting that Nexus, it's going to help you survive and do even more damage onto the Nexus, okay? I also have my Red Trinket ready to go. So in this situation, you want to position yourself as close to the Nexus as possible, and you're going to wait for the perfect opportunity 
to where you see at least at least four people in a completely different direction okay now I'm just running I'm just running okay I'm looking for an opportunity and I immediately see this I immediately look and I see this right here what do I see right there I see action I see one two three people really the only person that can actually stop me is um, trundle so I look I see that as a quick opportunity maybe I can get in there and get this done so without any hesitation I run straight at the Nexus boom 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 holy oh, almost got me there but yeah that's it that's actually it right there and I was easily easily able to uh oh okay let's let's play this again now normally Jinx would start attacking me but that doesn't it really doesn't matter I mean the the Nexus is half HP I have a guardian angel all I gotta do is just get there look at this by the time I'm here they're so tunneled on fighting that it doesn't even matter this this happens in every single elo dude I've done this strategy all the way up to platinum one in my diamond series I still do the same thing I still build the same way still play the same way and this have they just tunnel they're so focused on fighting that I easily just slip through the cracks and I go for the back door boom boom and it's that simple there it is end of the game final CS was 289 at 31 minutes not bad um, compared to Master E 131 he's 2 and 11 I'm 14 and 4 Shivana did great she picked up a lot of kills she didn't really do much this game I don't even think she took a dragon yeah she didn't even take a single dragon so she, she kind of just got random novelty kills that did nothing she didn't we would have lost this game if it wasn't for my pressure and all the towers that I took so we took one two three four five six about like around seven or eight total total objectives okay that's how much pressure we created in this game by ourselves regardless of how our team was doing oh and seven two and nine three and six you know our team was not doing anything at all they were not doing anything this whole game all I simply did was ask them hey can you guys group up as four and stall them out and even if they didn't listen I can still play off of my team's decision making okay so just remember vision control is key pressure is key the pressure game that's it that's all we kept doing this whole game we applied pressure shoved it down their throats and that's it that really is all you guys need to do um, if you guys have any questions about the builds or what to do in this situation what to do in that situation anything at all please ask me in the comment section below you guys should know by now that I respond to every single one of my comments and I really really like to help every single one of you guys so don't be afraid to ask um, if you guys enjoyed this kind of video this super in-depth video um, let me know let me know if it was too in-depth you know I just give, give me some feedback also drop a like on the video if you liked it uh, drop a dislike if you didn't like it it helps me out but I will be seeing you guys on the stream tomorrow I stream Monday through Friday and Sundays as well um, 2 o'clock or 12 o'clock uh, Central Standard Time I live in Texas so thanks for tuning in guys I'll see you guys on the next one thank you guys so much for watching I hope you learned something peace